The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I use the term good in quite, quite loose terms, but it's great to see you on such a wet, miserable morning. We're here in the warmth of our parish building to worship and to praise Almighty God. Just a few announcements that I want to wrap up through as quickly as possible. Next Sunday will be our normal service here at half past ten. It will not be family service. It will just be morning prayer as per usual. The same as this morning at half past ten. And then just to remind you again that from next month in four weeks time our services will change to eleven o'clock. So if you come at half past ten you'll be early. So, yeah. so it's, you can sit and wait. But the service will be at 11 o'clock from September on. As I'm saying, we're constantly looking for volunteers to help with various different things. I haven't anything planned as such, but as people come forward, I'll hopefully try and get something that's suitable for them that they can work on and help out in whatever way possible. And also confirmation. I've mentioned this every week, that if you know of anyone who is due confirmation or would like confirmation, please do speak to me as soon as possible. And one final announcement is that as of from this evening, I am on holidays. <laughs> Pick good weather, don't I? But I'm on holidays this evening until Monday morning, the 23rd of August. I'm on for two weeks. The services will be covered by Archdeacon John Scott with the help of Hubert and pastoral cover has been arranged. If you need the services of a clergy person, please contact the church wardens. They have all the details of who's covering and when. So those are all the announcements and we make them in God's will. So some words of scripture to start our service from Psalm 96 verse 9. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Our opening hymn this morning is to hymn number 664, To Zion's Hill I Lift My Eyes. We are truly sorry 
and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm today is Psalm 130, all seven verses of it. Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who is next But there is forgiveness with you. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. My soul waits for the Lord more than the night watch for the morning. More than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and shall be forever. Please be seated for our scripture reading. A reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, beginning at the 35th verse. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Moving to verse 41. At this, the Jews were bege there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. This is the word of God. Our children's talk this morning is roughly based on what would have been the epistle reading for today from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 through to chapter 5 verse 2. It's all about a role model, having someone that we look up to and admire and things. I have a number of pictures with me, some pictures that people tend to look up to and try to follow. You might know some of them, you might not. <laughs> First one I have is police man, police woman, a police officer, should I use the 
bit of going turn and all that. Used to be you'd see these coming walking down the street, you run away, you get away from them. But now it just seems to be anything goes, doesn't matter who, who they are. We have people like doctors. We respect our doctors, we look up to the doctors. They're extremely busy at the moment, they're up to their eyes and everything. But we look up to our doctors. We look up to those guys, those guys that I never want to stand in front of. Because if I do, I'm in trouble because I can't be a witness in it. Or I can't be on the jury since I'm the job that I have. But I really don't want to be standing in front of them in other ways. Or I could be in big trouble. I think none of us do, but they're judged. We respect those type of people. We respect that woman. She's been on the throne for almost 70 years. We look up to her. We look to her for her Christian guidance and for the leadership she has given to this country over the years. What about those? Can anyone tell me who they are? I don't know about it. The guy in the green. Incredible hope. The red is one. Anyone know who the red at the bottom of the red guy at the bottom? Flash, is it? Oh, they don't get the <laughs> The guy in the middle of the star. Superheroes in this group. Super Papa! I think the symbol on his chest sort of gives it away. Those are all people that we tend to look up to. There's footballers and there's movie stars and everything else that we all try to look up to. But the thing is, those, when we look up to those type of models or role models, we have to be very careful. If we choose a role model, we if we choose a role model just because the person is rich and famous, we will most likely be disappointed. But if you're looking for a proper role model, here is a good place to start. Oh, sorry, I forgot that one. <laughs> we have our role models, we look up to our parents as role models to guide us in our life. So say, to, to find the proper role model is we need to look in that. We need to look in our Bibles. Jesus gives us someone to look, or God gives us Jesus, someone to look up to, someone to follow. And that's what Paul in Ephesians was trying to tell the people. It's, he told them to imitate God in everything you do because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. So that's the person we need to be looking up to. Or not all these other people who will eventually die or they're just made up characters. So what I want to ask you a question. I want you to shout out the answers. <laughs> this will be fun. What are some of the things that make Jesus the perfect role model for us to follow? I'll give you a couple to start with. Compassionate. Passionate, yep. Jesus is kind. He's loving. He's forgiving. He's patient. He's obedient. He's respectful. He's truthful. That's just a few. Those are the type of people or the type of 
things that we Jesus is to us and they're the type of things that we should be trying to copy. We should be trying to copy those things. Jesus is our perfect role model because he's God's perfect son who brings salvation to all who follow him. So let us pray. God, thank you for sending your son to save us and to be the perfect role model for us to follow. Though others may fail, Jesus never fails. We want to live a life that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come now to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And grant her let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. And let your servants shine with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless those who you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts with us. And renew us by your Holy Spirit. The college for today, the tenth Sunday after Trinity. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them, make them to ask such things as pleases you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collects of Morning Prayer. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works be done, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the second column we say together, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in our attitude of prayer. And when I say the words, may we, the Church of Jesus, you respond with always live to honour him. We come to offer our prayers for this church, its people and community. Lord, we pray for a church that is honest, that is ready to confess when it makes mistakes and all the wrongs that have been done in its name and the shame it has brought on yours. May we, the Church of Jesus, 
Lord, we pray for a church that is open, where everyone who enters its doors is always aware of the warmth of its welcome. For a church more concerned for the hurting than for its rituals, more for the broken than for its own image. May we, the Church of Jesus, Lord, we pray for a church that is committed to worship, that is never content just to sing hymns or say prayers. For a church where worship, praise and adoration springs from hearts that know and love their Lord. May we, the Church of Jesus, always live to our Lord, we pray for a church that is ready to serve in your name, for a church that cares for the homeless, the lost and the broken, and seeks to reach out to those with no hope and no purpose. For a church that is at the heart of the community and refuses to be sidelined or ignored. For a church that is in the conscience of the nation, that speaks prophetically the word that must be heard. May we, the Church of Jesus, Lord, we pray for a church that is focused on mission and whose purpose is that all may believe. For a church that preaches the gospel and demonstrates its truth through the lives of its people at home, at work and in the world. For a church committed to evangelism and whose every meeting and every committee is centered on Christ and bringing others to know him as Lord. May we, the Church of Jesus, Lord, we pray for a church that is united in Christ, for a church that looks only to Jesus and has less time for pride and self-concern, for a church where its people are united, not just in word but in deed, for a church where there is love for each other, because first they have fallen in love with their Lord. May we, the Church of Jesus, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of love, look mercifully upon those who are facing the bitterness of bereavement and give them your peace. We pray in particular for those families in this area and parish who have lost family members in sudden circumstances. Help them to tread the lonely path before them with faith and courage and strengthen their hope in him who overcame death and opened for us the gate of life, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, in the days of your flesh, the sick were brought to you for healing. Hear us as we now bring to you in our prayers those who are ill in body or in mind, those who we name in the silence of our hearts. May your presence be with them to relieve suffering and distress and to restore them to fullness of life for your great love's sake. Amen. We sum up all our prayers in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We try to sing our second hymn, hymn number 372, through all the changing scenes of life, we omit verses 4 and 5.
continue with the reading from John's Gospel, in which Jesus is describing himself as the bread of life. As members of this Christian community who attend worship here week by week, I sincerely hope that you are left in no doubt about what is required of you if you want to experience eternal life with Jesus Christ in heaven. I try to make it as clear as possible, leaving you to make the right decisions. Sometimes it might feel repetitive and that I am constantly repeating myself. Is that wrong? I don't think so. The news that Jesus offers to each of us is entitled to be repeated. And to be honest, it should be repeated. Jesus here in this passage this morning is repeating himself. That is because the Jewish people were not understanding what he was saying. Christ is calling you all to him. But are we taking on board what he requires us to do? Unfortunately, we are not. We need to be listening more carefully and then putting into practice what God is telling us to do. At the stage we have reached in our reading for today, Jesus was most likely talking to the Jewish leaders. Up until now, it was the general crowd on the mountainside that got fed and the crowd that followed him across the lake. But at the end of the passage, Although we did not read it, we are told in verse 59, he said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. They, that is the religious leaders, were not willing to accept that, what Jesus was telling them. Previously he had told them that he was the one who would raise the people on the last day, those who had come to God. Can you just imagine the comments coming from the Jewish leaders. They must have been raging. Who does this guy think he is? He has had no training and how could he stand up and contradict all that we are telling the people? It's a natural thing to be thinking of. We even in this day and age do the same. How many times have you thought to yourself about someone who is speaking as to who do they think they are? I know all about them, and that is not the way they got on years ago. But the thing is that people do change, and that is something that we tend to forget. God can and does use events from the past in people's lives that can be of advantage in the future that we cannot see at the present. After all, all of us who are Christian have been forgiven of our sins and we use and we use or should be using that experience to tell others about the same love of Jesus that saved us that will also save them. Notice what the Jewish leaders said to themselves in verse 42. Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I come down from heaven? They did not understand the scriptures, in other words, the Old Testament, which is our equivalent. If they had have studied the scriptures as they claimed, they would have known that a Messiah was to come from God. Joseph was, of course, the legal father to Jesus, but not his natural father. Jesus told the leaders to stop with all their grumbling, as they were known, <laughs> we, we all know, for their grumbling and for their murmuring. As we are told back in the time of Moses, an event that I have referred to this past two Sundays, they were complaining about not having to eat, or having nothing to eat in the wilderness, and how they could, would have been better off remaining as slaves in Egypt. But God provided what they needed, not what they wanted. I believe there is a lesson in that for each and every one of us. We need to be very careful in our demands. Are they just for our own benefit or for the benefit of all those around us? The good news that is offered by Christ is for everyone, not just a select few. Jesus then says 
says in verse 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. This is one of those phrases that for the normal person in the street could be quite difficult to get their heads around. Some ask the question as to why God would want anyone to perish. The simple fact is that he doesn't. Sin entered the world through the actions of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden from the beginning of creation. Up until that point, everything was pure and good. Evil did not exist. That made the relationship between God and humans very harmonious. As God is pure, no trace of sin can be around him. That is why we are separated from God. But it does not mean that he doesn't love us any the less. There are two forces working here at the same time. God wants us back into that relationship with him that existed before the fall of man. But the devil is fighting against that, wanting us to remain as we are, living a life that is self-centered and focusing on ourselves. God wants to draw us to himself, but for that to happen, we must want to be drawn to him. We need to be putting ourselves into the path where we can be open to what the Bible teaches us and come with a mind that is willing to learn from the reading and preaching of God's word so that we can realize the errors of our ways. For us as humanity, to get back into that perfect relationship with God, God had to do something that was very drastic. Only someone who was pure could come and step in the place for everyone else. So that through him, we have the opportunity of reaching out to God and joining with him when our time on this earth is over. Should that be a long time or a short time? God is directing us to Jesus. We need to be following or walking in that direction and then be open to what he wants for our lives. Jesus is the go-between between God and us. And it is only through him that we can be saved. And it is when he comes again that all those who believed in him will be raised to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. Now if that doesn't make you excited, nothing will. The devil will try his best to convince you otherwise, to do your own thing and say that you're good enough. But as Jesus says, it is only him who will raise people up at the last day. And the thing is, we do not know when that day will be. It is only through the teaching of God's word that we can come to realise our need of Jesus and what lies ahead for each of us that believe. We do that by coming to church week in, week out. By coming along to Bible study, where we can delve deeper into what God wants for us and also availing of any opportunity that we can to learn more and more about Jesus and what God wants for each of our lives. Jesus was God's representative here on earth and he is the only person to have seen God. God is his father and we are all his children as well. Jesus, before coming to earth, had first-hand experience of being with God. And it is through the words of Christ that we have a word picture of what life will be like for those who have committed their lives to him after their time on this earth is over. God the Father is the font of all knowledge. And it is through him as God the Holy Spirit that we can and will know more about Jesus Christ, God the Son. Jesus even says it in verse 45, it is written in the prophets, they will be taught by God. For anyone to be taught, first they must be willing to be open to what is being said. 
The good news that God wants is available to everyone and it is accessible through Jesus Christ. So we need to come to him and continually learn from him. Jesus then tells the Jewish leaders and everyone else who is listening the outcome. Notice that there is only one outcome, not several as this world would like us to think. He says in verse 47, very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. To me, that could be no clearer. Eternal life is only available by believing in Jesus Christ as Lord over all our lives, not just a small part of it on a Sunday morning. There is the option for each of us. We either believe and trust in Jesus Christ who died for us, who died for every one of us, or we reject him. It's the only two options available, and we must, be, we must decide before it's too late for us. Anything, anything physical will never last, but a faith in Jesus Christ is the one thing that will last forever. And I'm glad to be part of it. I want you to join with me. And be part of that community with Christ as the head of our lives. The scripture reading this morning finishes with these words from Jesus. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That promise of Christ was fulfilled at the cross when Jesus died for you and for me. There is an open invitation for all of us, so please do not reject it, but accept the invitation and be certain of your place. Join to sing our final hymn, hymn number 641, Yield Not to Temptation.
Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. So we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.